Joining me now from the U.S. is the economic historian and author Neil Ferguson, a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution at Stanford University, and Stephanie Kelton, a professor of economics at the Stony Brook University, who's advised Democratic presidential candidate Bernie Sanders, as well as the progressive congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. She's now advising Joe Biden's campaign. Welcome to you both. Stephanie, if I could uh, start with you. I mean, we now know today that 42 million Americans have filed for unemployment. I mean, how serious is that? And how does America get out of that? Well, it's extremely serious. Um, you know, we are looking at levels of unemployment and unemployment rate that was last seen during the depths of the Great Depression. I mean, we are potentially on our way up, not back down with respect to unemployment, we could see 45 million or even 50 million people. The question as to how we get out of it is probably the answer is similar to the ways that we got out of the Great Depression. In other words, until the private sector is prepared to stand on its own and consumers are going to be going back and spending a lot of money and businesses are gonna be swamped with customers and start hiring and investing, the only game in town is the federal government, and that's what got us out of the Great Depression, and that is what's ultimately going to prevent a very long and anemic recovery or a very deep depression. And is this administration throwing enough money at the problem already, or does it need to throw a lot more? Well, it hasn't done enough. I think that that's clear. I think that uh, House members understand that more needs to be done. The House has already passed another piece of legislation, $3 trillion. The Senate has indicated that they're not quite ready to pick up uh, another round of spending. And so we're at kind of loggerheads here in the U.S. with Congress, with the House ready to do more and the Senate standing in the way. Neil, um, you've written a lot in the past about the dangers of debt. You've, you're one of the few people I know who've written in praise of austerity. What kind of problems does this sort of largesse, this expenditure, build up for the future? Well, it's a very different situation from the one that we were in uh, at the time of the financial crisis, 2008-2009. Uh, uh, in the period after that, uh, there was a debate about how far uh, deficits should continue to be run uh, and how far there should be financial uh, consolidation. It was a debate in the UK, in the US and in many other countries. And what I said and others said at the time was that uh, you needed to do some consolidation as things improved, otherwise you would not be in a good position when the next crisis inevitably came along. It came along in the form of a pandemic, a massive public health emergency, something quite different from a financial crisis. Uh, and here we find ourselves with enormous uh, increases in debt on top of already pretty high debt burdens. In the case of the United States, it seems like uh, the total federal debt is going to be up uh, north of 100 percent of gross domestic product. I'm glad your previous report mentioned World War II because we are seeing World War II levels of public debt uh, in the United States and in other countries. But to go to Stephanie's point, remember, we came out of the Great Depression not because of the New Deal, the federal government's policies in the 1930s, but because of World War II. And the really worrying thing is that it's hard to replicate the impact on demand of a world war uh, in peacetime. So I, I think we're going to have a long, slow haul uh, out of this, and, and it won't really begin until right. lockdowns have ended. Stephanie, what, what do you make of what Neil just said? Well, I think that there are ways to engage in large-scale public sector investment that don't involve another world war. I think that we can easily accelerate the pace of recovery through large-scale public expenditures that then give rise to a birth of new industries of growth and of employment and of spending, the private sector will recover much more rapidly with a robust commitment on the part of the public sector not to withdraw fiscal support prematurely, undermine the recovery. So I think that it is true that this is a different um, situation that we're in today. We're gonna get out of it differently, but the thing that remains the same is that it's gonna take a lot of public expenditure to pull the economy out of this recession. 
And who's going to pay for all that expenditure at the end of the day? Does it mean you know, considerable tax increases and on whom? No, it doesn't have to. So look, we, we just mentioned the financial crisis and the ensuing Great Recession. And there were a lot of people then who said, you know, we, we should be trying to force the economy to balance the budget. We should begin with drawing fiscal support so that we can somehow save up for the next crisis, so that there will be greater capacity to act when the next downturn comes. And what happened? The Republicans came in, they had the House, they had the Senate, they got the White House, and what did they do? massive tax cuts that exploded deficits and people said oh my god this is terrible we just used up all of our fiscal space when the next downturn comes we won't have the fiscal capacity to respond but what happened we've got four pieces of legislation passed already trillions of dollars have been authorized in new expenditure the question as to who pays for it is simple the federal government pays for it this is public money we aren't taxing in order to finance uh, the spending. We are simply, Congress is simply authorizing trillions of dollars in new public expenditures. And each time Congress passes one of these bills, it's effectively ordering up new dollars from the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve fills that mm -hmm. order by carrying out the payments on behalf of the U.S. Treasury. It's all done by creating what are digital dollars or bank reserves. And the answer is that's where the money comes from. But, you know, Neil, uh, if I if I may, uh, the lesson of, of history uh, and we'll leave the politics aside is that after emergencies, whether they're wars or pandemics, uh, governments do have to uh, engage in some retrenchments uh, after World War Two. The United States ran fiscal surpluses year after year and also achieved sustained economic growth year after year right through to the 1970s. And that's why the federal debt came down relative to the economy uh, from above 100 percent of gross domestic product. So at some point after the emergency passes, there does have to be some fiscal stabilization. The idea that you can carry on doing this indefinitely is the sort of magic money tree hypothesis of economics. And I'm afraid economic historians are here to spoil the party by saying there is no magic money tree. Well, the, it's simply not the case that the U.S. government ran sustained budget deficits coming out of the war. That is not what brought down the debt to GDP ratio. Not surpluses, that I'm particularly... Surpluses. It ran surpluses every year so through the 1950s and 1960s. No it, no, it didn't, Niall. That is not the history. The, the data is very clear here. What brought, and I meant to say surplus. If I didn't say that, that, that was a, a slip on my part. I'm objecting to the idea that the federal government's budget was in a sustained period of surplus and that that's what brought the debt ratio down over time. What happened okay. is the denominator exploded. It's a debt to GDP ratio. It is the explosion of growth in the post-war period that brought the debt ratio down. But the reality is that the ratio itself is not important. We don't have to fight against the debt ratio. We don't have to work to actively reduce the debt the debt ratio or the deficit, what we have to do is get the economy to recover. And look, the deficit is largely a right. reflection of conditions in the real economy. A bad economy, a bigger deficit. A healing economy, the deficit will okay. shrink on its own. Automatic okay. stabilizers will do that. Okay, Stephanie, sadly we could go on all night, but we've run out of time. Stephanie Kelton and Neil Ferguson have to leave it there. Thank you very much for coming in the program.